Well, uh, one of my things, mm. the things that people who are online probably know about me most, uh, is for my website, stillmansays.com. And that is a, um, an, an experiment that I started, which I've turned into a business uh, that is a reporting of my time sitting out in Union Square in New York City, where I live. Um, out in Union Square, I sit with two folding chairs and a table with a sign that says creative approaches to what you've been thinking about and then a smaller sign that says pay what you like or take what you need. And I sit out there for 10 hours a day or so, a couple days a week when the weather is appropriate and just talk with strangers about anything that all they need a creative approach to. And it's been everything from as simple as, you know, I need a name for my novel or I have a relationship problem or something's going on with my business to I need help finding my spirit animal or I have a dispute with a neighbor or I need to find a new religion or I need help avoiding getting murdered. It could be anything at all. And I hopefully help people look at the situation that they're in in a, a very creative way. Mm. And seeing it differently, it may be figured out. It might not be figured out. Uh, or it may just be seen in its proper or different perspective, which allows you to have a different relationship with it. You know, so often we think the only way to get into a house is through the front door, but sometimes it's the back door. Sometimes it's through a window. Sometimes you need to dig a hole underneath the house and come up through the floorboards. Deproblemizing through high weirdness. This this from your site, like this is what you do. I'm totally gobsmacked by the genius of that. How do you go from, um, you know, the time, the opportunity, people say you're really good at deproblemizing through high weirdness and then you just sort of say yeah you know what union square what it's really missing is um a desk and two chairs and these two signs and me um well i guess that's part of you know my my charm that i was willing to say this is the thing that's missing yeah. um i didn't know that it was going to turn into a blog or a years-long experiment i just thought i was going to just do it but on the first day i went out there it just worked and it was very clear I could keep doing this. Right. right. Your last post or um, the one, the most recent one that I read is, um, I've forgotten the title now. The baby Feet one in St. Anthony? Baby, yes, yes, yes. That's yes, a good yes. one. I'm really in love with this idea of lost or forgotten voices mm. and in the, in the realm of thing finding, I really think that there's something um, magical and beautiful about listening for those lost or forgotten voices. When we, our children, and when we're born, we are treasured by and large for all our qualities. People love us for our selfishness. They love us for our screaming. So all our voices for a time are um, available to us. And for lack of a, a better analogy, they go out in 360 degrees. Um, our radiance goes out in 360 degrees. And after a certain amount of time, we're told by our parents and our caretakers and society, um, you know, we love you, but it really would be helpful if you were a little less selfish, you shared more, you were quieter, you were doing, you, and not, it's not done out of malice. It's done out of sort of like getting you into a system, which can really be useful. Mm -hmm. But we start to close down and put into a bag the other voices that we have because they're not appreciated or heard. Uh, they're too different. And so I'm making up a number, but let's say you're 10, 12, 14, 16, 20. You have practiced putting three quarters of yourself into a bag behind you. And we don't listen to those voices anymore um, because it's, it makes our life too complex to listen to these other voices. And similarly, because we have to make so many choices every day, we streamline ourselves to say, you know what, it's easiest if I just listen to these particular voices. I'm going to get to particular outcomes faster. And because the world that we live in requires speed and efficiency, we move along with that and say, you know what, I'm just going to listen to the voices that are easiest and get me to the place that I want to be and feel most comfortable and safe in. And then we have cut ourselves off from three quarters of our being. So that, that leaves us feeling later in our lives. Why do I feel vacant? Why do I feel closed off? Why do I feel like the same things are happening? Too long ago, I've got a seven-year-old daughter and um, she was super proud of 
an award she came home with. Um, she was awarded in front of the whole school, and it was an empathy award. Um, <clears throat> about a week later, I was talking with her, her, her teacher, and he said, um, it was great to see her so proud of that award. You know, she's a bit too sensitive, though. Oh. And I was just like... The fact that you said that that's a girl in particular, you know, more broadly speaking, so many women are essentially forced to be to harden themselves yeah. and to cast aside some of the core elements of their femininity um, early. Yeah. And I've seen too many girls sacrifice on the altar of progress and forward movement, and they lose all their softness, or enough of it that they just become something different. Right. just want to be able to open the door to say, here's a voice, and see if, you know, if you've been carrying around a bag with three quarters of your identity for 30 plus years, it might be terrifying to look in there because you were dragging a bag for 30 <laughs> years, you'd be furious. Yeah. Uh, and so it is often scary to look at those voices. Mm. It's worth looking at the things that you have a very strong aversion to mm. and just see what your philosophies are about that and see if that's a part that you have um, need to tap into. Love, love, love that you've said that. That's um, I'm, I'm, I'm big on aversions um, in, in the work that I do too, so thank you for highlighting that. Do people ever show up and just say, dude, what's my thing? Like, what's my thing? Well, yeah, I think probably you know, the, uh, the most direct question I ever got for that that I can recall at this moment is someone who came to me and said, I've just quit my religion and I need to find a new religion. Yeah. So that's sort of like, what's my thing? <laughs> um, and I, the thing to finding your thing is to not be afraid to lift every stone and to stay there. Um, because finding your thing is good and important, but you're not just one thing. You are, it's impo more important for you to be whole mm -hmm. than to find your thing. Mm -hmm. you know, as an infant, you take absolute delight in playing with your toes, an absolute delight with throwing food, an absolute delight with falling asleep, and hugging your parent's leg and hugging a fire hydrant are the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't close the door to finding your thing. You just need to be willing to stay in some sort of uncomfortable spots and see what opens up there. There's a way in which we have this be very serious, but where does curiosity and play factor in? In terms of play, there's two types of games that one can play. There's a finite game, and there's an infinite game. And finite games are played to be one. They're played within fixed boundaries, um, and they're played for a title, and they're, they're bounded by time and location. So, but if you've ever seen um, people who just love to play basketball... You know, they'll, or you see kids play basketball, they'll run all of, they'll run off the court. The score ends up being 117 to four. No one cares. They're playing for the sake of playing. It's more important to keep the game moving than anyone winning. And so in terms of play, I think it's very important to not be playing for title or for winning or for status, but to be playing for the sake of play. And there is where there's freedom. And in order to do that, you need curiosity. Now, it's important to be able to know what the rules are, too. Um, that's perfectly reasonable. But ultimately, the game being infinite is more important than winning a particular game. And through that, that's where we refind our toes. For the people that are trying to find their things, what do you want for them? Um, to forgive themselves. Uh, for not having found it, um, to criticize themselves less for struggling, um, and to be kind because they've done so much work already.